Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Deepcool AK400 on an AM4 motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be showing you how to install the new AK400 from Deepcool onto an AM4 motherboard. Now, items you'll need from the actual packaging, you will need the four orange spacers, the four screws with the coarse thread. You will also need the top plate. Obviously, you'll need your cooler and a fan. And if you're installing the additional fan, you will also need the additional clamps or brackets also. Other things you will need is a Posihead 2 or PH2 screwdriver, just a crosshead screwdriver will be fine and also your thermal paste of choice if you're reinstalling this, or potentially if it's brand new in the box, you'll probably find there is a plastic cover over this base, and it's got some pre-applied thermal compound on there. Now the pre-applied thermal compound is actually pretty decent stuff, so if you've got that on already, I wouldn't worry about changing it out, it just seems to do a very good job, but obviously if you want to, you can just wipe it off and replace it with your particular favorite, so if it's your Arctic MX4, MX5, etc., feel free to do so. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to remove the four screws and the plastic lugs on our AM4 setup. When you've removed all four screws, remove the two plastic top pieces as well and leave the AM4 backplate in place. Next, grab the four orange spacers and put one over each one of the protruding parts of the AM4 backplate. Once you've installed those four, then you can grab your top plate mechanism and with the threaded sections, one at the back of your motherboard and one towards the front, towards the RAM, place it over the top of the orange spacers and you should find that the indentations line up with the orange spacers. Next part, grab your four screws, the ones with the coarser thread. There are two sets of screws included in the packaging. One is for Intel, one is for AM4. So we want the coarse thread, the fine thread one is to go with Intel. Using your PH2 screwdriver, don't do them all the way up tight, first of all. Just get them in and get them all started. When the last screw's in, just make sure the back plate is in the right position, and then you can firm down all the screws. I prefer to do this in a crisscross pattern, but it's entirely up to you. Next part is to apply your thermal paste if you haven't already. If you're using the pre-applied thermal paste actually on the cooler itself when it's fresh out of the box, then you can ignore this step. If you're replacing that thermal compound, then you can use your thermal compound of choice, just a small blob towards the center of the processor, and then using a plastic spatula, spread the thermal compound across the face of the heat shield. When you think you've got a good coverage on the CPU, then you can install the cooler. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need to, first of all, remove the fan itself. So put it onto a stable surface and with your fingers, just pull the spring clips back and out. And then that will release the fan from the heatsink. With the heatsink, there is a small icon at the bottom here or a logo. So depending on which way up you want your logo to be shown, normally it would be towards the bottom. So it is saying DC or deep cool albeit in a slightly stylized way. So that bit should be towards the bottom nearest your graphics card. Now to line up the screws, 
one at the front, one at the back, which are going to be lining up with the threads here and here. So my personal preference is to line up the one at the front, first of all, and then you should find that is a very nice angle. Now what you're going to want to do is with the screws, if they don't start straight away, or if you knock it out of place, if you do a couple of reverse turns and you'll hear a click, once you hear that click, you can then do up a couple of turns, turn the motherboard round or go around to the other side. Again, just a couple of reverse turns, you hear a click, that means the thread is in the right place, and then you can do up the screws, again, a few turns on each side, just to give you some even pressure. I do probably about three or four turns, and then just keep on repeating that. You will get to a point where it feels like there's a bit of tension. It's absolutely fine. There is a thread and a thread gauge, so it will only go to a certain point. You cannot over tighten this. So yeah, that's come to a dead stop on that side and a dead stop on that side. So we have pretty even pressure. Now at this point, we need to install the fan. So depending on how you're setting this up, if for some reason you want the fan on the rear, you can do, you will need to take the clips out and put them on the other way around. But for most people, just putting the fan on the front side is gonna be absolutely fine. And you can probably do this with RAM installed. We've deliberately done it without the RAM installed just to give you a clear image of what's actually going on. So the best thing to do is to get your PWM cable and put that towards the front and holding onto the side of the fan with your fingers and then your other fingers you can just use to hold the clips in place. If you try and level the fan at the top, completely flat with the top of the actual heatsink tower and then just pull the clips back and they'll clip into place or lock into place. They are actually quite easy clips to do so you don't need a great deal of force. If you're finding you're using a lot of force then you've possibly done something wrong where it's not lined up so just go back and repeat the process. But once that's done that's a pretty simple pretty straightforward thing to do. There isn't a great deal needed to do to actually centralize the fan if you're someone who's concerned about the aesthetics and wants it all to be exactly straight. Generally, it actually goes on pretty well first time. So the next thing to do is to actually plug in our four pin PWM connection to our motherboard fan header. On this particular board, it's actually right up here next to the RAM slots. So we can just plug that in there and then you can cable manage the wire out of the way. And that is it pretty much done. All you need to do is to build up the rest of your system or just go back and turn it on and make sure that everything's okay. You should find, depending on your setup, idle temperatures somewhere in the region of between about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius under normal ambient conditions. Under load, you should be experiencing somewhere in between. I experienced about 73 degrees Celsius on a Ryzen 9 3900. Obviously, depending on your processor, yours may be slightly different. If you find you're getting temperatures in excess of 75 to 80 degrees Celsius, check your mounting to make sure your thermal paste is applied correctly and the back plate is attached firmly. Any comments or questions, feel free to let us know in the comments section below. If you want a quicker answer, we do have a Discord chat server which runs 24 seven and is also free to join. So if you wanna join us there, feel free to do so. Links will be in the video description. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.